Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is David Hyman, your tour guide in Israel. Uh, today, meet my co-host, Elon Tamir. Hi guys. Elon and I, we've been friends for over 40 years. Yeah, 40 years. Uh, these are our motorcycles. Here, come take a look. So Elon, you ride the Africa Twin. Yes, it's a great bike. I love it. It's a beauty. My ride is the Honda CB500X. So uh, Elon and I, we're going to uh, show you the wonderful sight of Magdala, Migdal. Uh, the law in Israel is that before you start a building project, you need to get a permit from the archaeology authorities. So in 2006, a Catholic organization purchased land by the Sea of Galilee in order to build a modern guest house by the lake. When they were digging for the foundations, uh, they revealed ruins. It turned out that these ruins are a first century synagogue. Now that's a really, really big deal because there are only six first century synagogues in all of Israel. And none of them in, are in Galilee. So the seventh was found here uh -huh. in Galilee. And not only that they found a first century synagogue, they also found like the treasure. Yeah. It's a rectangular building. It has like an entrance, which is here. There's mm -hmm. one set of benches on the wall and there's two in the center. And in the middle, there's some kind of stone just right. sitting there 2000 years. So they start cleaning the dirt around the rock mm -hmm. and turns out that they hit the jackpot big time. You see, in the center of the synagogue, buried for over 2,000 years, hides may be one of Israel's most exciting finds. The Magdala Stone. And there's the stone when it was just revealed inside the building, inside the synagogue. There's the Magdala stone. So that one is a copy, it's a replica. Okay, they took the real one and it still hasn't even been published. Uh -huh. It's still being, being, there's research going on about it. Okay, let's take a closer look at the Magdala stone. The stone is made out of hard limestone and carved on the top and all sides are amazing decorative images. They might just be very attractive designs, but maybe some are symbolic. At the top, there is a rosette flower, flower design. The corners are in the shape of pillars, and the sides have oil lamps, palm trees, and arches. The biggest surprise is this seven-branch menorah, with an amphora on each side. This is one of the oldest depictions of a menorah ever found. How old? It, there's always question marks about dating a building, how old it is, what's the years. But if you find coins like these on the floor or under the floor, it dates the whole building. Tiberias, Tiberius, that's the emperor of Rome. And here it says Herodus Tetrarchus, Herod the Tetrarch. So who is Herod the Tetrarch in the days of Tiberius? He is one of King Herod's sons, Herod Antipas. And he even built a city over there called Tiberius, honoring the Emperor Tiberius. We know the, exactly the years that Herod Antipas was governor of, of Galilee. So if his coins are here, it gives us like an approximate date of when this building was built or was used. And that is the early part of the first century AD. These are the, exactly the dates that Jesus of Nazareth walked, traveled, and performed miracles here. So the question I get from all my groups is, uh, how likely is it that Jesus visited this synagogue? It doesn't say in the New Testament that he did. The, this, the town is on an important path that you would take from Nazareth to Kfanachum, which we know that Jesus and his di disciples used a lot because the path from Nazareth to Kfanachum goes along the wadi underneath Mount Arbel. Mm -hmm. And if you're walking down that wadi, this is the first Jewish town you'd reach. 
So, so we know that uh, actually the Jesus visited the synagogues in these days. Yes, yeah. So it's not unlikely that he visited the synagogue here too. Absolutely. So back to the Magdala stone. Uh, research of the stone is still in progress. Uh, most of the scholars agree that the stone was used as some kind of reading table. Uh, the scrolls of the Torah were be kept in um, a special room and would be taken out on a special occasions. They would be unrolled and placed on this table and they would be read to the public during the reading sessions on Saturdays, on Shabbat, on holidays. It's amazing, you can actually see the, the, the true colors that uh, this building was decorated with. Yeah. And uh, usually we see the gray of the stones and here we have the chance to see the real color of the wall. And probably the colors were brighter. The town was known as Migdal Nun. Migdal, mm -hmm. a tower. Nun is a word in Aramaic, it means fish. All the other towns around the lake, they were fishing, fishing villages. And this one was probably the industrial zone. Everyone would bring their fish surplus here uh -huh. to be processed to some kind of product that can be preserved and shipped. And so these small baths, they could be places where they would put the fish like in a big, like a bath of salt. Okay, uh, because... Or kind of containers or something. Yeah, exactly. So, so this is the industrial zone and this is the worship zone, <laughs> yeah. very close by. A short distance to the south, the excavations revealed a complex of upscale buildings and four Jewish ritual baths, mikvaot. Amazing! Okay, now these mikvaot, the water comes from underneath, from the aquifer. Wow! And look how beautiful the stairs are carved in the way that you can go down and take a dip. Oh, wow. And this is 2,000 years in Mikveh? 2,000 years in Mikveh! Unbelievable! Unbelievable. It's still alive and it gets the water, you know, from it, a natural source. Wow. Sure if you can see it. Put the one alone. This is something that people come here in order to go to the, to the Mikveh. Absolutely. And then to pray. Exactly. Absolutely. The chapel is called Duk in Altum. Go to the deep. Here, after he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Duk in Altum. This is Luke chapter 5. And the lake was closer. It was here, where the olive tree is. And this was, these, this was part of the port. This floor, Amazing. it's original. So I see that the style of the seats, the benches, is the same style that we saw outside there. In the first century synagogue. And this painting, this painting is from an event in Galilee uh, with uh, concerning Jesus of Nazareth. A lady reaches her hand through the crowd and touches his talit. And then, so this is the moment when Jesus chases the demons out of Mary Magdalene. And behind her, you can see the town of Magdala. So Mary Magdala, Mary from Migdal. This is the meaning of her name. Earlier excavations of Magdala revealed a second century mosaic floor of a Roman mansion depicting a fishing boat with three oars and a double mast. This ancient fishing boat was the inspiration for the design of the boat chapel. The boat altar was designed according to the details of the ancient Magdala boat mosaic and also at the image of the first century Sea of Galilee boat that was found in the Sea of Galilee in 1986.
A modern mosaic depiction of the map of Galilee was created by artist Clementina Manzo. The map mosaic shows all the towns, the sites, and the roads of first century Galilee. You can walk from Nazareth and then visit Cana where the first miracle happened, changing the water into wine. And then you can walk along the, the Via Marius, the Roman road. And here, look how it reaches the lake through our bell. And there's Magdala. And then you can see there's the lake, the Sea of Galilee. And on the northern shore of the lake, Genazareth, Tabcha, Capernaum, Beatitudes, Bethsaida, and the people are fishing in the lake, and there's the, the boat. Such a beautiful work. Very good. The flower rosette from the Magdala stone is the logo image of the modern Magdala guest house. The first century synagogue can be seen through the lounge windows. And in the center of the lobby, you will see a replica of the fresh fish pool that was found at the harbor excavations. How long since you've been to the Kine, Elon? Long time. Too long. Too long. Here's the Yofi. You mean the Sea of Galilee? <laughs> I do mean the Sea of Galilee. Is that what you mean? I mean the Sea of Galilee. And here's the modern Tiberius. Modern Tiberius. Harbel behind us. The church, Duke in Altum. Here. This is uh, certainly a place you should come and visit. Absolutely. So folks, uh, thanks so much for joining us today. We really hoped you enjoyed this video. So if you did, please give us a like and please uh, subscribe to the channel. And uh, let us know where you'd like to go in our next tour of wonderful Israel. Take care, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.